Mm. So, uh, so, like this chapter essentially goes th through three things, something they call complete pooling, something co that's called no pooling and partial pooling. So for the executive summary, I would say that complete pooling is that you smack all the data together into one model and you don't care about um, anything like hierarchy, hierarchies or groupings in the data. Uh, or you could do no pooling, which means that if you have groups or hierarchies in the data, you don't you have one, one model per group. Or partial pooling, which means that, that um, the posterior, you, you get a posterior for sort of each uh, group or hierarchy, uh, but those are still influenced from, from, from the data uh, in the other groups. So I guess it's a concept to think about it as something sort of in the middle of complete pooling and no pooling, I guess. Uh, if you work with, with um, partial pooling, then Stan is able to, to handle the trickiness uh, of it. And uh, yeah, we can just drink drink coffee or whatever other beverage you like, given that it's getting late in the weekend, maybe, maybe a cold beer. Uh, while the NCMs change run. Uh, no code accomplished for partial pooling in this chapter, but I think it's coming in the next. Okay, so complete pooling. So, and what they go through in the chapter, like if you haven't read it, so, so they, they do speak about uh, that there could be a hier hier hierarchy or like grouping in the data. So imagine that you, you, um, you have data from, you have data from, from, let's say that you have the distribution of students' grades but you also have uh, which school they go to, they sort of have a grouping or hierarchy, right? Because sort of um, within maybe all students within a municipality, uh, students are also divided into schools, for example. Uh, and yeah, uh, ma makes sense? Yeah. Okay, walk through. Okay, so complete pooling. Uh, so, I mean, you create a posterior from all available data. So essentially, I mean, you do pretty much uh, the same thing uh, as you've been, we've always been doing. So you just, you have your data. In this case, they say that the, the I think it's the net time, if I remember correctly, from the, the running data set as a function of age. And they specify like the data, family, a bit of priors and stuff. So, I mean, uh, yeah. So the data set used in the book contains the running times for the same race for each runner year after year. So it's sort of, they run the same race and they do it repeatedly and then you can you can follow runners. So so a complete pool model that would just be like this is what we've been doing before. Uh, all data together. Uh, does that description of complete pooling make sense? Do you feel comfortable with the explanation? Okay, good yeah, stuff. To sum it up, like it basically do not care of any kind of hierarchy. Exactly, exactly. There is no uh, there are no relationship. We we assume there is no relationship. Between any kind of um, of the um, let's say statistical individual, this is how we call it in French. I don't know if the correct e exactly. Is. So so like given but the yeah. running data set, uh, you have multiple race times for the same runner, uh, and then maybe I could have formulated this better. But essentially, I mean, since it's the same runner multiple times, those are not really independent samples. Uh, I mean, if you're super fast one year, you're probably more likely to be to be fast the next year. Or if you're super, super slow one year, you're probably likely to be slow the next year. Uh, once again, going back to the students' grade across schools and classes. So, so if we have a distribution of students' grades, but uh, there's a hierarchy or there's a grouping, uh, I mean, the school has a location and there's likely in the, I guess, the general case, there's a socioeconomic bias for the children attending to that school. Uh, and if there's, if there's classes in schools and they have the same teacher, uh, obviously like the socioeconomic uh, status of the area can influence uh, the distribution of grades or, or, or the teacher you have can influence it. So, so the samples are not uh, independently distributed. So that would sort of be a violation of, of, of the, I guess what linear regression or regression modeling relies on, relies on independent sampling, right? Uh, and according to the book, they said this violation of independence can produce misleading conclusions of the relationships, um, which we sort of went through. Um, all good. Okay, okay, let's keep going. And then they, they had a, in the book, a graphical represent, representation, so you have the full population and just assume that all sort of uh, samples are independent. So you have the population, you have a bunch of independent samples. Uh, okay, 
let's continue with no polling. Yes. Yep. Uh, so it's sort of like no polling means that you have one one model per group or hierarchy. So runner one has their samples, runner two has their samples, runner M, and so on. Uh, so I mean, sort of impl implementing it now. I use the LM. We haven't used LM function in R for 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 this course, I believe. But I mean, it's basically the same as Stangilm uh, the linear with the linear model, uh, except that it's only only linear. Um, so sort of yeah, like. This code would mean that you know you see uh, you predict the like y is the dependent variable x is the independent variable so sort of you, you assume that this relationship with the output of y depends on x the data is a data frame called df uh, there are hierarchies in the data frame but for each model we just care about one hierarchy at the time so sort of saying that we try to find our correlation between given the running data set between um, like the age for that particular runner uh, and how fast you run, you run the lap. And you only care about one runner at a time. Uh, I mean, which is sort of like, in one way, I guess not completely unsensible. You can get like, you know, you get a distribu distribution for each runner and then you can get a distribution of distributions. So, I mean, yeah, sounds interesting, I guess. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, did I do a good enough job of explaining uh, what, what no pooling implies? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah right. just a question. Um, can you use filter in capital letters? Oh, uh, yeah, that could be a typo. Uh, okay, no, that's okay. No, because I, I thought that was uh, an option provided, I don't know, some, some pages that use the uh, LM function. That's okay. Okay. I, I, I don't. I don't, I don't think. I, I don't think. 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 I don't so, so because I'm, I'm not it's sure not if it's the can... equal also it's the double equal it's not an nice assi assignment i think but uh, yeah, yeah you're yeah, probably yeah. right there. oh it's that double error ouch let's, let's go to the next slide now let's okay we understand that's I, fine, you but... apply that yeah make, makes sense but, um, um on, on on the more conceptual part uh you are lacking also the information that all the runners are human and share like you know some human uh, relationship back same biology i will say or maybe not some uh, biology but like we are lacking with the no pooling we are losing a bit of information also like just generating a bunch of model we are losing the information that uh, all the runner share some specific uh, some same point like you can say that like if you take the the, the school for example um if you are considering like every student with, without the school we are losing the school information basically yeah yeah i mean to say the same thing in a different way yeah. like let's say that you have you have a bunch of 10-year buckets and you have 10 individuals in each bucket uh and then it, inside each bucket you, you feed half the, half, half the bucket like one liter of coca-cola per day uh, on top of the normal diet uh so so um I mean, I guess the results of like, you know, drinking one more liter of Coca-Cola, uh, it's pretty different. Like I could, I could definitely drink a liter of Coca-Cola between 11 and 20 without noticing any changes to my teeth or, or uh, the, the measurement around my waist. That's not the case anymore. Uh, but but uh, uh, so, so the results of drinking the Coca-Cola is probably different for age group. That's what I would guess at least. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it still probably goes into the same direction. I think it would be very rare uh, for one age group bucket to, to, for example, lose weight by, by drinking, drinking one liter of Coca-Cola on top of their uh, normal diet per day. Uh, so yeah, may, maybe there is a way to, to combine that better. That would be partial pooling, I guess. But something I would like to discuss, I mean, typically, uh, yeah, like, Typically, I guess we usually discuss at the end of the presentation, 
but what the book says like if you if you use no pooling you can't generalize outside the sample uh, which which i guess makes sense like i mean let's say that you have another example and then um let's say that you just like you know in one group one hierarchy you, you actually only have two two data points so so you fit a line to two points and then you know things can go like you know if this is the let's assume that the regression line goes like that but then all of a sudden you get the upper point there and the lower point there and you have a completely different regression line that just looks that way because you have, you have two or three points but that could actually happen if you have hierarchy and and sparse data I, mean, uh, I think you, you can always generalize it's just at your own cost <laughs> you can yeah exactly this, but, uh, you are, you are, your results are not backing a lot with science which well you know sometimes works but sometimes doesn't work <laughs> yeah but I, I mean i mean it depends like what was science and and what is science i guess yeah true also. The, the way i learned science in school means that that uh your statement is falsifiable it's it's possible to prove your statement wrong uh, in theory and that that however you conducted the experiment or however you conducted your study is done in a reproducible manner. Uh, so, I mean, if you, if you you find two individuals and then you get their data and you, 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 you draw a regression line, it will probably generalize quite poorly, but I would still, the way I learned about research methodology, it would still be scientific. It's just, yeah. it's, just it's, it's poor science, but it's, it's, still, it's still science. It doesn't bring a lot of insight. <laughs> no, yeah, depends, depends, depends on who's interpreting the data, I guess. But okay, yeah. anyways, I would, I would like to, uh, like, does anyone have any thoughts or ideas? Like, uh, I mean, yeah, according to the book, you can't generalize outside of the sample if you have, if you have complete pooling, uh, if you have an absence, complete absence of pooling, no pooling. But, but yeah, how does that differ from a completely pooled model? Um, anyone with any? I mean, Insights or thoughts, or I guess it depends what you are here in the, the case. It depends what you are pulling or not. I think, like because um, let's say, like if you are like let's take the runner example, like the cherry blossom race. This is the example that they use. Like so, they have runner. It's what we call a longitudinal longitudinal study most of the time, because like the each runners uh, run every year. So like I don't know how long it was. Uh, it have been like this this run, but long 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 time like six seven ten years i don't know so you have a strong connection between the time of a runners uh between the first years and the second years and the third years you kind of like if i was like saying like you have a strong correlation between the time a runners do between his previous time or posterior time you know this is like the data is highly correlated between each runners mm -hmm. So <clears throat> by doing uh, a, a full uh, a full pooling, I don't remember this is the name, yes, full pooling. Uh, they they call it complete pooling. In, in the, 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 the complete way. pooling, you take care of the um, correlation. The correlation is just inside every model. But if you do like uh, a no, no pooling at all, you are like just saying like, okay, I'm just randomly sampling something, but what you are randomly sampling in some data that are highly correlated. Because like, I mean, if I'm running like a, I, I will not run a marathon. Let's say if I run five kilometers <laughs> and then I rerun like five kilometers, let's say one year, uh, my time should be like around the same because I'm the same people, except like if I train, we, we can see plenty of, um, and, but I, 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 it would be like bad science to say like I have sample, uh, let's say two individuals differently, which in fact is just me. You know, okay. it's like it's not it's not like a good sample. It's uh, you have like a, a highly correlated uh, way of doing it. And uh, but yeah, I mean the way the way I think about it is that let's say that you let's just say for the sake of it, you you, you collect data from runners uh, who run the same race every year, yeah. and you have a bunch of data for for people uh, who started running when they were twenty. And uh, the last longitudinal data point you have for each run is when they're 30. Yeah. Uh, and then if you do a complete pooling of that, I think that completely pooled model will generalize horribly for, for the expected times for, for 50 year old people. Uh, yeah, probably. Like do, do, doing, doing no pooling, uh, 
probably generalize as horrible as well. Uh, but well, but I don't I don't see the fact that, that that you pool or you absolutely don't pool being the uh, the issue there in, in how it will generalize outside of the sample. I agree uh, with you on that. I think this is a good point. Like the boss boss case doesn't generalize well. <clears throat> At least on the first case, you are kind of hiding the stuff. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, sometimes when you read some papers, like, and when the, on the methodology part, where they said, well, we kind of get, <laughs> you know, this is like, they have hierarchy in their data, but it doesn't display it well. On the doesn't like, you have to, this is sketchy, I will say. In some papers, sometimes you smell, you smell the sketchiness, but yeah, I agree with you. Podcast doesn't generalize as well. Because at least when I read the book, uh, and, and, and I mean, it could be that I just need to read the chapter again better, but uh, like, I remember them saying like, you know, that a, a model using no pooling or like a model, like, you know, a set of models using no pooling don't generalize way, well outside the sample, but uh, I don't remember them giving uh, neither, uh, 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 neither, uh, yeah, neither like, you know, an intuitive example, nor like a mathematical proof for it. Uh, yeah, because it depends on correlation. If like, for example, there is no correlation between me running five kilometers and, you know, uh, me, me running five next kilometers, maybe for some like incredible reason, like I become an next day an incredible runner and the day after like, uh, like uh, the worst runner ever, or I don't know, uh, the worst three. Uh, if you have no correlation, the no pooling will work. This is just the fact that the hierarchy imply correlation that's make it less uh, working, in my opinion, but could be wrong. Yeah, no, I guess that's a good point. Maybe the fact that like the hierarchy uh, implies correlation within the sample, it uh, generalizes poor. I think that's a very good point. But maybe there is a point, like this is just the, the one I see. So maybe Frederica or Will have other idea, I don't know. Okay. Uh, let's. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Let, 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 let's go on and then uh, let's go forward and then me and you know discuss a bit more about that. I like to uh, think about correlation. Yeah, and then uh, as a first like layer, um, which may, makes the difference within the general uh, situation and another one which is more correlated. But, you know, let, let, let's go forward and then maybe we go back. Okay. It's not that much more to it. It's partial pooling was the last. So it means that um, the groups are individual, but still connected. So I guess, uh, like, I guess one, I think this next example could be that the impact of higher energy prices on whatever outcome variable. Uh, it's probably not equal across the world, probably varies by country, uh, but I would definitely believe that the impact in the continental Europe uh, still has something to say about the impact in, in the UK, for example. Uh, so I guess that's a, an example where, where uh, yeah, uh, the impact with another groups uh, yeah. might, might affect. Yeah, for example, um, the, 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 the price of the barrel, the price of the barrel is probably the, the same uh, all over the world. Yeah, there's probably some, some like connected how, you know, how yeah. energy prices might be connected to, to other things and how, how that um, escapes yeah. further in society. But essentially, I mean, they, I, I think like all in all, they sort of said like, you know, you can, shape the posterior both within the group sample but also use the data from other groups um and yeah i, I don't think they said so much more to be honest uh showed a graph but there were no code examples for this one uh and then i guess some food for thought for like going forward so we're working with linear thingies uh like linear, li linear models and the equation for a straight line i guess maybe this one varies a bit by country, like I guess y equals a plus bx, that's the British and American equation, right? Maybe there was a different equation in your countries. 
kind of the same. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can trust it. I mean, I mean, we had KX plus M uh, when I grew up, but I mean, of course, it's exactly the same. You just rearrange, rearrange the stuff, and then you use a uh, different, different uh, letter. It's not the underlying mathematics change just because you landed in a different country. Uh, so, like. Um, uh, if the effect of something varies within hierarchy, I'm just thinking that like we're sort of basing stuff on this equation. So, so maybe that means that this one can vary by hierarchy, or maybe it means that this one could also vary by hierarchy. Uh, so, and I guess uh, I haven't read chapter 16 yet, but I guess they, they talk more about it. Um, and I don't, yeah, and that, that, that was it for this week. Like they didn't, they didn't share any code for the last like partial pooling stuff. Uh, so uh, feel, I feel like I'm letting the group down a bit by no code examples, but I mean, there were like, no code examples. So I couldn't I couldn't do better without sneak peeking I mean, into the next chapter. If you feel very bad, you can like uh, present the next week. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's, uh, let, let me think about that and come back in two weeks, Olivier. Okay, um, just like to discuss a bit and before like we need a new present, uh, someone to present next week, but before doing that, I think uh, I'm, I'm unsure. So I will like speak like, feel free to interrupt me and, and stuff like that. But uh, I think in classical statistics, they call it shrinkage, the idea of partial pooling. But we will have to check that. I will have to double check. I think this is one way of calling it shrinkage. Uh, so we have to to investigate. If someone know, like feel free. But this is just me trying to remember, and I could be wrong. Yeah, you you might want to do that uh, <laughs> the the, the next week because I see that you haven't presented since a while. <laughs> Maybe. So let, let, let's. Okay, sorry. Next, no. next week I'm alone with two kids, so I don't know. I <laughs> oh, I so can, you can have them help out. It's gonna that. be so easy. You're three people, and it's only one chapter. Piece of cake, and kids learn so fast. Everyone knows that. Yeah, they're ten months old. You're like, <laughs> <So far that way. laughs> but yeah, sure. Okay, I guess I will, I will, I will, I will put myself, but um, on next week I will try to do it. No, I don't have. Um, let me let me add myself. A quick comment what? about the shrinkage. Oh, Sorry, cool, I was then. like, go for well, it, also, go for also, it. maybe I misremember, but my from a while ago, it was I he, I heard the term shrinkage in the context of like if you have tons of covariates and you need to sort of like still want to include all of them as predictors, then you sort this is sort of like an algorithm, and for you to like upweigh uh, certain certain of these ones um, with like smaller uh, errors and like downweigh the ones with large errors so that you could still fit all of them in and, and sort of deal with like too many covariates but not enough sample size situation. And, so but I'm not, yeah. So the, the idea is kind of using uh, information when you have too many, uh, it's, I, I feel like this is a bit of the small idea you are using hierarchy to bring information where we are lacking, but. Uh... I, I think they're different concepts. Like, I mean, examples of shrinkage is the lasso or ridge regression, which is, yeah, exactly what Lisa mentioned. Uh, so oh, so yeah, essentially- and, and Brendan just shared the thing, yeah. So, so apparently Brendan, like, I will have to read that. So, but thanks for sharing that, Lisa. It's cool, like, uh, you know, it's bring them a bit more like, uh, yeah, I, I remember it's also, it's also to deal like with when you have like plenty of uh, explanation variable and you want to kind of um, sort it. But I was like, so it's good. Like we can we can read that for next week, and and bring in it. Uh, so I'm the one who are doing it. No one want to do it. Come on. I mean, it's it's a big chapter, so yeah, number sixteen. So maybe I'm just throwing an idea out there, but maybe someone can do the first half and someone does the second half. Yeah, I will try to do the first half and we can see later. First half I can do, uh, 
if I can do more and br and bring meme and cool stuff, I will do it. But uh, I love it. But yeah. Okay, I can, uh, I can uh, uh, help out with the second, the second part of the job. Yeah, okay. So let, let's see. I, I will put myself is so it, far I can go. Has anyone got the link to the sign-up sheet for it? Yeah, I can, I can give you a link. Yeah. Because I can. Yeah. Because so, to be honest, I don't really want to do it next week, but I'll... We, we, we've got a, we've got a few more weeks to go, so uh, I'll go pick some. Just four. Yeah. Time flies, eh? Time flies. Yeah, yeah, time flies. Time flies. Like no, no, I'm rocking the street uh, with the Bayesian music and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, it's good. I, I I mean, even if it's like you know, you know, it's a quick chapters. Uh, for me, it helped me clarify a bit. And if you have time, I highly recommend like the Michael Rest video with his golem uh, that go to coffee. I, I will try. I'm sure Brendan have the link. I just remember the video. Like, so you have this example to understand the partial pooling. It's like there's a robot that go to coffee in various coffee places. And the robot record the time that it gets for having a coffee. And the robot go randomly on various places. On various, the, you have, let's say you have 10 coffees, it go randomly like to coffee A to coffee B to coffee C, and then it, it go back again in an arbitrary way. And uh, it grow uh, and it record like the time to get the coffee. And by the idea is like every coffee, probably every bar, let's say like place where they serve coffee, probably have like uh, some specific mm, numbers, but they're still, they're still making coffees. So it's also like a good example of, uh, of a way to understand partial pooling, I feel. So I can like maybe link the, try to find, I don't remember in which video it was, but uh, the, the coffee golem, if someone remember. Uh, let me see, maybe I will find it quickly. So, so essentially the, he says that there's a, uh, the direction goes the same for like, uh, both popular and unpopular coffee shops are, I think, it's, that is, I think it's that they're busier in the morning than in the afternoon, but the difference is bigger for popular places, but the difference still goes into the same direction where you can get better estimates by, by combining them. Is that the example? Uh, yeah, I think it's some, some example like that, but I, let me try to find it. <clears throat> But yeah, if you wanna like, I think it's a good example. Like if you wanna chill and listen cool uh, his voice, and you can do other stuff. Like, I, where was the coffee? The, the coffee example, maybe lecture four. I don't remember. I tried to find it. No, lecture five maybe, maybe six. Uh, that was mentioned in a, in a chapter that I did it. So uh, very uh, now I don't uh, in in the applied exercises. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, give me a second. I'm trying to find the golem, but well, I can't find it. I will. I will post it. Uh, the, the chapter ten. Oh, 10. That's Chap fine. Look at chapter 10, applied exercises. Let me check quickly. And then everyone can be free. If it's that, then. Why? I, will, I will go directly to chapter 10 and see if it's that. But yeah, it looks like you kind of easy. apply that. Oh. Applied exercises, coffee rating, ratings. So, um, well, it's not on chapter uh, 10. It's not on the video. Uh, you probably have done it in another video. I think the, I posted a link. I think that's Oh, the you found it? Cool. I think so. Let me check. And uh, Lisa and Brendan, like, oh, yeah, it's you found it. Perfect. So this is a, an example 
uh, of another way to describe like uh, <coughs> uh, the the hierarchic the the pooling. And now let's read what Lisa. It's in the discussion paragraph of the link that we yeah. shared. <laughs> Oh, okay. So it's linked, but uh, not strongly. Yeah, because you use the bootstrap in the frequent list way. Okay. So good. Um, I will read. I will read that letters. I have to complete my uh, take home assignment. <laughs> this is like uh, this is timed, by the way. The timing, <laughs> crazy. Is this uh, for a job? Oh well, yeah, it's for the a job. Beer? Yeah, yeah. And the I, I have like given like an amount of time to do it, mm -hmm. and that's why I recommend you every library because like when you when it's timing. La loading the library doesn't count, you know, so you can just load the library that do all the job, <laughs> like a lot of job. Uh, but if I was like on the personal, I will limit the dependency and stuff like that if I want it to be more, more like, but yeah, it's it's time at so load every package you want that go quicker for you. <laughs> that's my take Good luck. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, nice reading for next week, guys, and see you. I think we can right. expand the conversation on the chat on the Slack also. I will, yeah. I will post it. So maybe other people can join it. Bye. Cool beans. Thank you. Good luck. Bye. 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 Bye.